Hi. It's Tuesday of Holy Week, the day that has traditionally been called the day of parables or the day of controversy because of how much back and forth there was between Jesus and the Jewish religious leaders in his teaching at the temple that day. They were questioning Jesus about who he was and, and what authority he had to do and say the things that he was doing and saying. And Jesus was teaching them and teaching all of the people who were present exactly what he was about to do and exactly why he had the authority to do it. In fact, this day covers more space than the Palm Sunday story, the Maundy Thursday story, Good Friday story, Easter Sunday story, any of them, this, this day in Holy Week covers more of the Gospel of Mark, chapters 11 through 14. I'll talk about this day. Out of a 16-chapter book, that's how much time is devoted to Jesus' teaching on this day. That's how certain he wants us to be of who he is and why, can, why we can be confident of what he was about to do. And there was one specific thing in Mark chapter 12 that he made a big point of whose son he is. I'm going to read this for you, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Beginning at verse 35 of Mark chapter 12. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. That's the word of our Lord. It was a common way of talking about the Messiah who was to come to call him the son of David because the scriptures were clear. He was supposed to come from the house and line of David. He was supposed to be an ancestor of David. But yet that didn't mean that David was greater than he was. And that's the point that Jesus makes here. He may be the son of David by bloodline. But most importantly, he isn't David's son. He is God's son. And since the Messiah, our Savior Jesus Christ, is God's son, that's how we can be absolutely confident. He has the authority to teach us what he does about what is good and right in this world and about what he is going to do to save us from our sins and bring us to heaven to be with him forever. And that is how we know that he actually can accomplish all those things for us. If Jesus was just some anybody off the street, or if Jesus was just some leader like any of the others that have come, had come along before him to try to gather up followers and, and be impressed with him, then he couldn't actually save us from what we needed to be saved from sin and death and the power of the devil. But since Jesus is God's son, that means he really can be the true Messiah. He really can be the true Savior. He really could live a perfect life in our place. He really could die a sacrificial death that would be valuable enough to redeem every single person who has ever lived. And that is how we know he is always faithful to his promises, will always take care of us in our lives and will surely deliver us home to heaven one day. He said it here on Tuesday of Holy Week. And then he went out and did it and proved it and guaranteed it on Thursday and Friday and Sunday. That's what we look forward to this Holy Week. That's certainty that God's Son is our Messiah, our Savior. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for this opportunity to remember who you are and everything you've done for us. Help us to always have that confidence that because you are God's son, you have won our salvation and you have the ability to take care of us and always do what is right for us until you finally deliver us home to be with you in heaven forever. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you today and always.